Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and Bible journaler here on YouTube, and I am celebrating one year of this channel being in existence. I put out a video every Sunday for a year, and that was pretty good achievement for me. I'm pretty excited, and I hope that you'll scroll back and find some videos that will help you in your Bible journaling. I try to put out some simple ideas that most anybody can do. Every once in a while I throw in a tough one, but I try to show you some really easy ways that you can get into Bible journaling. But all month this month, I'm going to be addressing those topics that I wish I had someone to tell me when I first started and have someone sit down and explain them to me. So I'm going to explain to you. This video is a talky video. The rest will actually be showing you different things in Bible journaling. And you can stay tuned for those. Make sure you're subscribed. But today I wanted to talk a little bit about sin and sin in Bible journaling. It's kind of a sticky topic. So it's, yeah, I'm going to keep it focused on me and what I've experienced in Bible journaling. And I'm going to set two ground rules for the comments for all of you who like to leave comments. One is I want you to watch the whole video before you leave a comment. And two, if there's any hate in any of that or condemnation or negativity that's addressed toward me or anybody else in the comments, I delete them because we have enough hate out there. I want to keep this a positive place on this platform, okay? So there are three areas that I have fallen into sin when Bible journaling, and they kind of had caught me by surprise when it happened. So I want you to be aware that it could happen, and it still happens to me on a regular basis. It's just one of those things. So the first one is judgment. I find myself, and I found myself at the beginning, really judging others for how they did Bible journaling. And that comes from a whole lot of different things in everybody's different backgrounds, in the way that we treat the scriptures, in the way that we treat the physical book, the way we've been taught in our churches, the way we interpret particular verses of the Bible. But there's a whole spectrum of people out there. <laughs> There's people who will never, ever make one mark in their Bible, not even writing a note in it, not even writing a link to another verse and something that they think reflects on the verse that they're reading because that would be adding to Scripture. Then there's your next group that are happy to write all kinds of journaling notes and sermon notes and study notes in the margins, but don't you dare draw a picture in there. That's, that's going too far. And then there's the ones that are okay with drawing something in the border. But don't even think about interacting with the scripture text. Don't even consider it. And then we have those who are okay with putting something over the text, as long as the text is perfectly readable, 100%. And then you have the people who love one verse, and God has spoken to them through one verse so much that they've taken their journaling Bible, which is not their study Bible, they've taken their extra journaling Bible, and they've covered everything else except for that one verse because they love it so much that they really want that one to stand out and speak to them. And they're honoring that verse because that's what God really showed them. And there are people along all ends of the spectrum that think all the other types of people are wrong. I was one of them at one time. I... I stood in judgment of people about how they actually did Bible journaling. I've learned since then that they all have a heart for Jesus. And that's what matters. The heart behind Bible journaling is what really counts. And Bible journaling is not a salvation issue. So I'm not going to fight people on something that's not a salvation issue. I'm going to encourage people to continue to get into the Word. If Bible journaling is how they do it, that's awesome because I love Bible journaling. The other way that I actually get into condemnation as well is seeing different people's visual approaches to the scriptures. And I still, to this day, even though I've gotten over the other thing, I still find myself sometimes looking at somebody's page and judging, well, gee whiz, they put that image on there and those words, and that doesn't have anything with this, to do with the scriptures. They just wanted to draw that thing in their Bible, and I find myself getting on my own little high horse. I don't know what that person had a conversation with God about. 
I don't know where that connection is. And I've done some pages myself that have a little maybe far connection to what the scripture actually said. So yeah, I need to have grace for other people. The second sin that I fall into, and this one was a huge one for a long time for me, is allowing competition to seep in, allowing the world to seep into my Bible journaling. And when I first had started, I was so desperate for information. I followed everybody. I looked at what they were doing. I was trying to do stuff as good as them. And I wanted to be liked. I wanted to have the hearts and the favorites and the repins. And I was all excited about that. And I wanted to be all that in a bag of chips. And I compared myself to other people. I compared my work to theirs. Was I as good as them? Or was I not as good as them? Or did I think I was better than them? Yeah, you can see where all this could lead. <laughs> Bible journaling can become sinful because it makes us compare ourselves to others positively or negatively. And it takes us completely away from Jesus. It's away from our, our reason for doing this. And we can't do that. We need to stay focused on why we are doing the Bible journaling and how God handled that in me was to make me take some time off from looking at social media. I couldn't look at YouTube videos. I couldn't look at, I had to unfollow all of the people on Instagram and Pinterest and stop looking and just spend time with the Lord and spend time doing my Bible journaling just with him. That was a year and a half worth of time and it ended a while back, but I had to take a year and a half sabbatical from all of that. It was hard. I didn't want to do that, but God needed me to get my heart right with him. And in that time, one of the things that I had come up with for my own process was keeping it simple because I had also gotten into that worldly thing of buying all the stuff, all the stamps, all the inks, all the everything, all the supplies, all the stickers, everything in the world. And what he showed me during that fasting time, that sabbatical away from looking at everyone else's work, is that with some simple watercolors and pencils, I could do something that's very me. It's, it's something that I can do with the Lord without all that stuff getting in the way without going broke just to do Bible journaling. The third way I have fallen into sin in Bible journaling is a little hard to admit, but I'm gonna put it out there because I'm being transparent and maybe putting this out there will mean I will remember the pain of this moment and never do it again. Um, which is using my Bible journaling to prove how Christian I am. I don't know if that's happened to any of you, that when you post something and you want everybody to see you're an uber Christian because you do this thing with the Lord. Normally our study time is very private. It's just between us and him. Our devotional time is not something we broadcast on Facebook. And what I found was not that I, it was wrong to share, but my heart behind it sometimes was trying to prove how uber Christian I am. And that's not right either. Jesus says we're to go into our prayer closet quietly with the Lord and just spend time with him. So there's a lot of Bible journaling that I do now that doesn't end up on social media. It doesn't end up on my Instagram account. It doesn't end up anywhere. It's just time for me and him. And I had to pull back from some of my sharing because of that. And it was hard to do because I get excited and I, I created something beautiful in, in my worship time and I want to share it, but I have to check my heart every time I share anything so that I know that I'm doing it with a heart that honors the Lord. So I put those things out there for you to do with what you will. If you can learn something from those and not make the same mistakes I have, or maybe take them into your prayer time with the Lord and ask him if there's some sin that you've fallen into with something that is so honoring of him. Bible journaling is a beautiful thing. It's a, an excellent way to spend some time with the Lord in creative worship. But we need to be careful that we're doing it for the right reasons, with the right motivations. And don't get sucked into the world. Don't get sucked into comparing yourself. 
Don't get pulled into buying all the stuff. Don't get pulled into motivations that are not pure. Keep yourself right with the Lord and stay in your prayer closet with Him. And He's the one who can instruct you the most. So there we are, true confessions. I'm a person just like you are. We're all flawed. We're all failures in so many ways, but we are blessed to be loved by a God who adores us the way he does and he forgives us. All we have to do is ask. All right, you take care, guys. God bless you. I'll see you later.